So today I'm going to be showing you a uh, really, really cool um, David Blaine card trick. This is one of the newer ones that I've seen. It just kind of popped up on my feed and I uh, went through and I watched it and it was a really, really cool um, tear and restore uh, type trick. So I'm going to break it down for you guys, show you kind of what he does and then give you some more examples of how to, you can make this a little bit easier on yourself just so you can perform it. Um, so anyways guys, here's what um, the trick is actually going to look like. Alright, so like I said before, I'm not going to actually do the performance of it. Um, I don't want to really butcher it too bad because it is and actually is really good. But I'm going to give you guys all the tips and tricks that, um, and slights that he does. That way you guys can do this on your own. I'll try to make it a little bit easier for you as well. Because obviously he does practice a lot. So for a lot of beginners or intermediates, this might be a little more difficult. But it's not too bad. So essentially what he does is he starts off the trick with the three hearts on top. And don't mind this, I'm just using an old spare deck. But um, he uses a duplicate set of cards, so this is in case the three of hearts. And he has those on top of the deck, and he tells his spectator to go ahead and shuffle the pack. And he doesn't overhand shuffle, right? So he knows he's not gonna, he knows his spectator isn't going to do a, a fancy riffle shuffle and get the cards mixed up. It doesn't really matter if you do an overhand shuffle, because more than likely, those cards, the three of hearts, are actually going to stick together. Right? So they're not going to be separated throughout the shuffling. As you can see, they're still grouped up here. And what he does is he goes to the deck. He says, look, so look, these are all normal cards, right? And what he's doing is looking for those threes, and he spots them. And the moment he spots them, he kind of just pulls them in. That way, the spectator doesn't see the double. He pulls those in and keeps spreading the cards. And you're maintaining a little break in the back just with your index finger. You're holding onto them. So when you spread the cards, you still have a... The moment you pull the deck away, you're pulling the deck away from where those three, three of hearts are. And all he does is cut the deck making sure those threes are still on top. So you don't even have to shuffle up the deck if you don't want to. You can start off with these on top. And then all he does as well is he gives the deck a swivel cut and then holds that pinky break in the back. As you guys can see, I'm holding a pinky break right where the threes are. And what he does is a classic four. So he spreads the cards and says, okay, so you can touch any card as the cards go by. And the moment he gets that pinky break, he kind of just pushes the card out a little bit. He's going to go ahead and force one of those threes on the spectator. The next thing he does is he takes the top half of the deck and he goes, all right, so go ahead, um, show the card to everybody, and as he's showing, as he's telling them to show the card, he just cuts the deck. Now he's leaving that second three of hearts on top of the deck. So at this point, what he does is he's not looking at the card. He already knows he has a separate card on top. He says, all right, so go ahead and put your card in the middle. This is one of the threes. This really does go in the middle. He puts that there, and he snaps his fingers, whatever. He says, look, I'm going to make your card jump to the top, and all he has to do, guys, it's a super simple double lift, and this isn't going to be the spectator's card, all right? So he says, all right, so I'm going to snap my fingers, the card's going to jump to the top, he does his double lift, and this isn't going to be their card. So he says, you know what, this is kind of close enough, so let's go ahead and take this, and what he does is he rips up, um, he acts like he's obviously ripping up the four, but it really isn't the four that he's ripping up, he's actually ripping up one of the threes. So let's go ahead and pretend this card is ripped up, I don't want to rip it up because obviously I don't want to ruin the deck here, but... Pretend this card is ripped up. This is inside of the spectator's hands, right? So he goes, all right, so you know, what was your card again? Your card was the, he looks through the deck. He looks for that three of hearts. He's, oh, okay, so your card was what? The three of hearts. And all he does is, as the spectator is kind of looking at this card, and you don't want to put the card back on top. Once you say, okay, so your card was the three of hearts, you don't want to set it back just yet. You want them to look at the card. You're pushing off. You're getting a, uh, a nice little pinky break. You do a push off with your thumb. Get a pinky break underneath the top card. And what you're going to do is a shape shifter change. So he shows them the card here like this, shakes it, and then it turns into the card that it was before. You can set this card, and you can put this one in the middle, right? So now you're left. And you don't really say anything about it when you put the card back into the middle. You're just kind of leaving, making sure this three is on top here. And the next thing he does is, all right, so go ahead and open up your hand. So at this point, what he does is he obviously opens up the hand of the spectator, and it's going to be this ripped up three. Okay, and the next thing he does is, you can also see the way the cameras are, are panned around in the in the uh, the newsroom. There's obviously a whole bunch of angles that are going to be seen. So if what they do is they zoom in on that ripped up card, because if the camera were to be stay zoomed out the way it was, you'd be able to see what he's doing. And all he's doing is folding up the bottom card. So what I'd suggest for you guys, if you're not really comfortable with doing, um, I believe it's called the Mercury Fold, where the card's on the bottom here. I'm not too good at it myself either, so what I'd recommend is having maybe a third duplicate and maybe folding that up, keeping that in your pocket, and the spectators are looking at the ripped up card. You nonchalantly get that folded card, and what he's doing, right, so while this, while the camera is panned out, he's just doing, and I'm not going to teach it because I'm not too comfortable, I don't want to screw this up for you guys and kind of give you guys a wrong example of how to do this, but essentially all he's doing 
is folding up, since that card is underneath, he's folding up the card while the spectator isn't looking, and the camera's not really panned at him, and he's folding up the card underneath the deck. And as you guys can see in the uh, video itself, you can see his thumb tips are actually white right there. Okay, so you can tell he's putting a lot of pressure on that folded card underneath, and that's going to be that second folded up three, and he has that underneath his hand just like this. So the spectators aren't going to be able to see it because they're not really looking at it. He has thumb pressure, applying pressure, making sure those creases are nice and folded. And the next thing he does is he goes, okay, so uh, are you, you, know, you right-handed or left-handed? He doesn't make a big deal about picking up those shredded cards. So he says, all right, so are you left-handed or right-handed? And all he's doing is he's doing a, um, a switch off. So pretend, guys, pretend this card is ripped up. So this is the ripped three. All he's doing is picking up the pieces. And he says, okay, so you're right-handed, and he puts the pieces underneath the deck. And then he's taking, and underneath, if you guys can see here, underneath I do have that folded up card. And all he's doing, guys, is he's throwing the deck over. Here are the pieces in his right hand. He says, all right, and he does a switch like that. And obviously, since this is folded up, he has it really tightly gripped in his hand. He's kind of covering it up. And he says, okay, so go ahead, I'm going to put this in your hand, but make sure you grip very tightly, because he doesn't want the spectators to see that this is a folded card. So he puts it in the hand. He says, okay, now he hasn't let go yet, so make sure you do not let go the folded card until the spectator has a super strong grip. He starts to so go ahead and grip the cards, and they're going to be gripping the cards, right? So make sure you put it in a way so they grip it tightly. They're tightly gripping it, and you take your hand out. You say, hold on to this card, right? So the card's going to be held on to very tightly. They're not going to notice it. And then you say you know, like whatever magical gesture you want. So obviously he kind of forces the outcome. He asks him, you know, what do you want me to do with this card? And the spectator kind of fumbles around a little bit. So you kind of want to find somebody who isn't that well versed in magic. That way you can kind of impose the ending effect. So he goes, you know what, you want me to just bring it back together for you? He goes, all right, so go ahead and open up your hand. And just like that, guys, a three is folded up. So um, this is his little torn and restored card trick that I saw. I thought it was a pretty cool trick. I just want to show you guys how you can do it. That way you guys can practice it as well. And like I said before, I'm not too I'm not too good at doing the folding method that he does. But like I said, you guys could actually do a, I guess, a third duplicate. Keep that in your pocket. Bring it out and then do the whole switch routine. But I just want to let you guys know exactly what he was doing. I thought it was a cool trick. Um, sorry for the inconsistency lately, but um, I will be back to my normal schedule. And um, anyways, guys, hope you guys like the video. And as always, thanks for watching. Hillary Carford, she's a literal vampire, belly goblin, hobbling, bound, chasing after your mama.